For the longest time, Intel and AMD have dominated the PC and laptop processor market. In fact, they're usually the only options end users can get, not excluding Apple, of course. You guys have the M1 and the MacBook series. Now, there's a newcomer to the market, Qualcomm, pioneering into the Windows OS with the Snapdragon X Elite processor. Yes, the same company that makes some of the most powerful chipsets on your smartphones is now dipping their toes into the computer world. They're now producing processors for laptops and they can be specifically found in newer models that feature Copilot Plus. The question remains though, how does the new Snapdragon X Elite stack up against the big boys, Intel and AMD? Well, I'm Ozzy from Yugatech, and in this video, we're going to be talking about everything you need to know about the new Qualcomm Snapdragon X Elite processor. So, hold that OBB, and let's get started. First, we have to talk about the processor itself. As I mentioned before, the Snapdragon X Elite laptop processor is made by Qualcomm, the same company that gave us the very powerful Snapdragon 8 line of smartphone chipsets, and so forth. As for the Snapdragon X Elite, it is Qualcomm's flagship 4 nanometer 12 core processor for laptops with up to 3.8 gigahertz speeds. It features Cortex X Elite cores, which are designed for superior speed and responsiveness. According to the brand, these cores can easily handle intensive tasks like gaming and video editing with ease. This is on top of the high performance cores and energy efficient cores to give a good balance of performance and power consumption. Unlike most laptops that run NVIDIA or AMD graphics processors, the Snapdragon X Elite is paired with an Adreno integrated GPU. Yes, it's just like the ones found in some of your smartphones. As a result, it does have the potential to run games, but we'll talk more about that later on in this video. To ensure everything runs snappy, its minimum requirement for memory is LPDDR5 RAM, which can vary per laptop depending on the specs of the brand. Perhaps the most important feature of the Snapdragon X Elite chipset is its ability to support AI through its NPU or Neural Processing Unit. This is why you often find this chipset being used on the new laptops, this one, that are Copilot certified, sporting their own Copilot shortcut button on the keyboard. And just like this new Asus VivoBook S15, for example, it has the ability to translate foreign languages into English just by listening to the audio. We can make a doodle and let the AI improve the drawing for you, and a lot more. It's a similar story to what you will find on other laptops with each brand having their own unique quirks and features. The biggest difference between Intel and AMD versus the Snapdragon X Elite chipset is that it uses a different processing architecture. Intel and AMD use the x86 architecture, which has been the industry standard for the longest time. This means you have a lot of support for and optimizations for various softwares and games. Meanwhile, the Snapdragon X Elite is based on ARM architecture, which is fundamentally different. For those who aren't familiar, ARM architecture is more commonly found on smartphones, tablets, wearables, and even consumer electronics like newer TVs, as well as automotive applications like your head unit and even EVs. That's because this architecture uses a lot less energy, making them more useful in applications where battery life is important with the trade-off of slightly lower performance. However, that saying may be a bit outdated with the likes of Apple's M-series processors as proof of concept since they do run on ARM architecture. But outside of the different architectures, it's pretty much the same for the end user. You have support for up to Wi-Fi 7, amazing thermals for the performance, and even various security features as standard. The brand also claims the processor is very power efficient, resulting in longer battery life for laptop users. So that's pretty much the basics of the Snapdragon X Elite chipset. But now let's talk about how it performs in real life. We'll be using the new Asus VivoBook S15 as a benchmark since it does feature Snapdragon X Elite chipset. And we just happen to have it right here in the studio. Now, do note that this isn't a comparable video and instead we'll be showing you what we experienced from using this model so far. For regular users, you won't really feel any big difference between this and either Intel or AMD. You still have Windows 11 from the get-go with the benefit of Copilot Plus. Mind you, these features are also available on the Intel and AMD versions of the same Copilot Plus certified laptops. So if you want to go back to Intel or AMD, you can and still have Copilot Plus. But going back, like any Windows terminal, we can pretty much install any application we can think of. And it does so 
quite well. Users into productivity focused machines like Ultrabooks or any light and thin laptop in general will enjoy the Snapdragon X Elite chipset due to how great the performance is. Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop and more can be run without any issues. But we did have to install an older version of Adobe Premiere in order for it to run on the machine. We also ran our benchmarks and we were able to get some great scores, over 24,000 on Geekbench 6 Vulkan and 3D Mark Night Raid, and around 8,700 for Cinebench. We'll flash the scores on screen for those who like to run the numbers. So there's no question that the Snapdragon X Elite chipset is capable, especially one to be productive. It also offers good battery life with up to 9 hours of battery life based on our testing using the VivoBook S15. However, the same can be said for users who like to play games. Currently, the Snapdragon X Elite still lacks a library of x86 emulated games as most titles are optimized for x86 architectures. With that, we couldn't even run free to play competitive titles like League of Legends or Valorant. We've even tried playing older titles like Left 4 Dead 2 and the application would launch but not really boot, hindering us from even getting into the menus. That's not to say it can't run any games at all. The only titles we were able to play with absolutely no hassle were Don't Starve Together and Zenless Zone Zero. Given how Hoyoverse titles are made for various applications such as mobile, console, and even PC, we suspect you can run other titles from the same developer such as Honkai Star Rail and Genshin Impact with no issues. And that's pretty much the current state of Snapdragon X Elite powered laptops. It's a little similar to when M1 Max first launched, so if history is to repeat itself, we should be getting a lot more ARM support and X86 simulation in the coming years. For those of you interested, here's a somewhat updated list of apps that are currently supported on the new chip. So that's pretty much everything you need to know about the new Snapdragon X chipset which is now finding its way into more and more laptops from different manufacturers, not just Asus. Qualcomm has even hinted at the eventual coming of their own desktop CPUs, and with the promise of what we've seen from the Asus VivoBook S15, we can't wait for what they have in store. But what do you think of the new Snapdragon X Elite chipset? Would you consider getting a laptop powered by one in the future, or are you sticking to the big two for now, Intel and AMD? Whatever the case, Share your thoughts in the comments below. And if you found this video informative or just enjoyed it, do drop a like and subscribe to our channel to watch more. Don't forget to follow us on our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, X, and TikTok. And of course, visit yougatech.com to stay updated with the latest tech news and reviews. And if you want to know more about the new Asus VivoBook S15, you can check out our review, which is now live on the Yougatech website. Once again, this has been Seth. I'll catch you guys next time. See ya.